This is an odd little solar-powered insect trap that I bought recently. Unlike the ones that try and attract insects in with uh, the blue light and then zap them with uh, high-voltage wires, this one is more like a sort of beer trap. And it says, attract and trap wasps and insects day or night. Blue light attracts mosquitoes. I'm not sure it actually does. Reusable, non-toxic and easy to use. And the instructions basically say, unscrew the lid and slide the switch to the on position Add sugar water, fizzy juice or beer to the base, screw it on and that's it. Now, here's the thing. Uh, the biting insects, now I'll just zoom down this now. The biting insects like mosquitoes, I don't know if they're attracted to light. They're more attracted to the uh, carbon dioxide that you emit. Anyway, this uh, has a little solar panel on top. It's got a solar module with a little bit of film across here. Let's get the film off. And it's got... Uh, Solar module with a blue LED, focused blue LED, pointing straight down, and then it's got a little conical uh, bit at the bottom that kind of splatters the light sideways. But this isn't going to be very bright. And it is aligned up in such a way that you should be able to see that through the attracting hole that lures the insects in. I wonder how much of this is just the visual effect, and they're actually attracted towards the sugary liquid. Anyway, let's see if we can open it up. So I'll get a driver. And this looks as though it's got a clip. I think it's got a clip. Does this pop down from the top, I wonder? Uh, let's just uh, prise in and see what happens. I shall turn this off. It's quite annoying having a blue light pointing in the face. This little cap comes off. Now, how is this clipped in? I think they've pushed this down and it's actually snapped into the, the bottom section. So let's try and get this out and we'll take a look at the circuitry. This may break in the process. It looks as though it's been jammed in very tightly. In fact, you know what? I may have to pause to get this out because I can't actually see how it's clipped in at the moment. I think it's been... Oh, no, no, there it is. That will also be a very loud clicking noise on the microphone. As will that one. My apologies for that. This is not coming out. It is a little wedge that... Uh, hold on. Oh, I've just clipped it back in, haven't I? Not easy to get out. Bear with me one moment, please. This is where I stab myself. There it is. So what do we have? Oh, I have actually physically broken the latch off. It's so good, the latching mechanism. So what do we have here? We've got the classic little circuit. Let's get a screwdriver. Classic little circuit with the four pin chip uh, and the inductor and the little uh, nickel metal hydride cell on board. And of course the little switch as well. Uh, that is very straightforward. Right, I'll, I'll draw you the schematic because uh, it doesn't take that long. You know what it's going to be anyway, but I'll show you. Anyway, so one moment, please. Okay, let's explore. It's the classic YX8018 4-pin chip. And interestingly, they have used it as a strain relief for the cables as well. If I zoom down in this a little bit and I try and focus on that, you will see that they've actually folded the chip over the wires to hold them in place. That's not a bad idea. I shall zoom back out again. And I'll focus back down on the main subject here. So there's a current positive rail, a switch in series the button cell, and there is the uh, solar panel itself. That solar panel charges the nickel metal hydride cell when the switch is closed via a diode inside going to the zero volt rail. When it detects that the voltage from the solar panel has dropped to a low level uh, for reasons of it being night, basically, uh, it starts pulsing this inductor, and they've used a very high-value inductor here. They've really gone for maximum runtime at low intensity, so this is basically just a visual feature. And uh, what happens is that normally the 1.2 volts, or, or a peak of 1.5 fully charged, is not enough to go through the blue LED, but by pulsing this inductor, it builds up a magnetic field, and then when it collapses, uh, when that turns off, uh, it adds on to the nickel metal hydride cell voltage, and that portion of energy isn't enough to actually go through the LED and light it. So it's an interesting enough design. On one hand, the solar panel here, which is a little uh, 
dam around it. They've laser cut a little ledge around it to try and stop moisture damage penetrating from the sides. But uh, it will also be protected by the fact that this cowl over the top sheds water over the side. However, water will inevitably sneak in. I suppose that's not a huge issue because this is already filled with sugary water. But it also means you're going to get condensation and that is going to affect the lifespan of this. It's going to basically cause corrosion of the PCB. So the same rules apply. Um, if you want it to last a good length of time, cover these circuit boards in lacquer. If you can get them out, because it was very destructive getting out. It was very well clipped in. I don't know if that was glued as well. I think it might have been because it looks discoloured there. But that is it. The... Uh, Solar powered insect trap, to be honest, I think it's just the sugary water that's attracting the insects and the light is more or less just a gimmick, but a novel and visually appealing device anyway.